What up Blockchain Nation, what up YouTube? Thank you guys for taking the time to uh, subscribe to this channel. If you haven't, please hit the subscribe button below and make sure you hit the bell so that you can get weekly notifications whenever we release videos. So uh, if you have subscribed, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you, thank you for those who watch these videos consistently. You are far too kind. All right, so today I want to talk briefly about how to set up a Bitcoin full node. Uh, but before I even go into that, uh, I guess this came up because somebody asked me recently or we were having a discussion about Bitcoin mining and how to set up a, a uh, whether it was profitable to set up your own uh, Bitcoin miner and also what's the difference between, a mine, between mining for Bitcoin and running a full node. Now, I wouldn't want to try to explain it in a way that's um, not as good as what I read recently by the master of Bitcoin, which is Andreas Antonopoulos. I, love, I thought he gave a fantastic definition, but let me just show you, let me just show you what he says and I'll put a link below and how he differentiates mining from running a full moon node. Now here's what he says. Said, mining is just pretty much you running some specialized software and hardware on the machine somewhere. Um, so what it does is it's the validity of consensus rules is not determined by miners. Here's what Andreas says. It's determined by nodes. Miners take these verified transactions and place them into blocks, which is good. So what mining does basically is a, a miner runs specialized software and hardware and it's a machine running somewhere. It takes already confirmed transactions or unconfirmed transactions um, from the unconfirmed pool and then it takes these transactions, it puts it in a block and it tries to put it on, add it to the Bitcoin blockchain. Now the first miner or the first uh, computer that does that is, gets rewarded with um, Bitcoin. So I'll say that again. So what the miner does is it goes into a pool of transactions which are already verified by nodes which, and then takes those transactions, puts those transactions into a block and attempts to put that block onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Now the first miner or the first computer, the first person basically to do that gets rewarded with Bitcoin. And that's what the whole mining process is. is, is that's what the whole mining process is. I'll put a link below on a more detailed course that you can read about mining. And I've also done a previous video where I just mentioned this whole mining process. But that brings me back to what a node is. So a node is a computer participating in the global Bitcoin network and this is Andreas' definition, by speaking a protocol called with Bitcoin. It's interesting, the name of the protocol is also Bitcoin, that allows these nodes to communicate with each other and propagate transactions or uh, blocks everywhere. So what a miner does, a miner takes these transactions and creates it in a block, adds it to the blockchain network, but these transactions are validated by fully functional nodes running all around the world. So. I'll show you this. If you go to this website, which is the Bitcoin Core, now a, to form a, a fully functional node, all you just have to do is download the bit or well, some software. And here's a good one: the Bitcoin Core software is you can you can get it from this website, and it's great to just run a node because um, it has other features. It has come to this, its own wallet. You can actually verify and validate. You look through your transactions yourself, as opposed to looking for another resource to confirm or verify your transactions um, for you it has a better user interface but this is cool you can read through all this and it gives you all the details but here's the requirements for you to set up your own node the requirements 200 gigabytes of this space your 500 megabytes daily um, what's this okay this is your 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 download for your um, your internet isp make sure that you can you have at least 500 megabytes a day and also you check out your upload as well. You have to have at least one gigabyte of RAM. You can use your desktop, you can use your laptop, whatever you want to use, and your OS, you can use Linux, you can use Mac, and you can use from Windows 7 all the way to Windows 10. So that's the requirements that you have, you should have if you want to set up your own fully validating Bitcoin node. And so um, now I'm going to show you, this is my own setup I've, I've done. I have a desktop running here, which is now a fully functional um, Bitcoin nodes. So if you see, it says running the full nodes, which you can support the Bitcoin network by running your own personal full node, which is what we're doing. So a full node is a program that fully validates transactions and blocks. Almost all full nodes also help the network by accepting transactions and blocks from other full nodes, validating, validating those transactions and blocks, and then relaying them to, to further full nodes. So what you just have to do, yeah, it costs a little bit of money. You can follow the instructions. 
whether you're on Linux, you're on Windows, you're on Mac, and um, whatever you're using. So I am actually using a Windows machine. I'll just show you real quickly, just to be sure that I have the actual um, um, requirements. So let me just show you the space that I have. I have 425 gigabytes free space, which is good. So my system requirements, I have eight gigs of RAM. I have my processor is, it's a um, 3.4 gigahertz, gigahertz, did I say that well? System by system, I have 64 bit OS and I'm running Windows 10. So I think I'm good in terms of requirements from what we saw there. So um, I'm fine. So all you just have to do is install the Bitcoin software and this is it. Now it took me actually two weeks because what I did was when I installed the software, I downloaded the entire Bitcoin network. And as you can see, I'm up to date. I'm just gonna show you where you get this information from. I'm on, uh, this is, as of this recording, it's Monday, August 19th. Current number of blocks that have been run so far is 590,000 blocks. And my agent is this Satoshi 0.18. You see what, what, how, why this makes any sense soon. And the uh, network traffic. So basically, I'm still trying to figure out how this works. I'm full, full disclosure. And um, but, but there's something that's very, very important that you guys have to look at. So it gives you your own wallet. As you can see, I have zero, zero bitcoins. I can validate and verify my own transactions myself without having to worry about anybody else because I'm running a full node. But this is a very important part. So I want you to look at. So if you go to this URL and I'll, sh put, I'll paste this below, you can see, well, the advertised nodes run around the world. So we have about 9,000 nodes. I'm sure there are more than this number of nodes, but these are the ones that have made themselves public. There are so many, I'm sure, that are running around the world. In the United States, we have 2,000, Germany, France, Netherlands, China, and the rest of the world running these full nodes. Although, even if a node says, his, or someone says they are in the United States, they actually might be somewhere else because there are different softwares that you can install on your PC to give you a VPN for a different location, just to add that. Okay, so this is me. Now, so this is my own node. So, if you go here, once you've installed your node and you click on check node, this button, you should get this green um, indicator showing that you can, you're good. But I had an issue with this and this kind of kind of reason why I did this video. If you go to, you have to actually be able to enable your connections and I'll show you what you need to do. So if you go to this part of the, the uh, um, documentation, you can log into your router. This is my own router, why right? this is important. I'll show you, uh, so I need my password. So you can actually get your router password by actually going to your physical router and looking on the box itself. So I use a Verizon router. So if I go to here and I put in my password, my password is put in my password. This is important so that you can connect. So here we go. So I now go to your firewall settings. It says you want to proceed. Yes, this is important. For your IPv4, you have to make sure that you have you allow inbound. This is important that this is inbound. Uh, accept outbound policy, accept. Because in some cases, the default usually be to reject inbound transactions. Although you're doing this, you're allowing your computer to, to like, be accessed around the world. So a very important part about this firewall protection is that you have to go to your DMZ host and then you have to enable your IP address and you have to make this public. Yeah, reason why I said that because if you go back to the actual documentation, you would see that it tells you how to create your DHCP searching. Some of this documentation is kind of really old so it doesn't give you your um, most updated things you should do regarding your firewall and stuff, but you can look through this and I hope this helps. But anyways, in doing that and in enabling my firewall settings, for me, let me now see if I can check my node and this is supposed to turn green. So I'm checking my node. This is my node address and you see, voila. So I'm green, I'm good, I'm connecting. And if I click details about my node, you can see this is me, I'm here, I'm up. This is the agent I'm using, Satoshi 0.18. And you can confirm that here. You see, this is my agent that I'm also using, that I'm using as well. It shows my location, it shows my network, and my node is up and running, and it looks good. So, you should try this out as well. Try and set up a node. If you have any issues with your firewall, you can come back and look at that aspect, this aspect of the video, just to see uh, what it is that I did. Here's more traffic, and some other stuff. So, there's a lot to read, a lot of doc documentation, and full transparency, I haven't read most of it myself. 
So just to very reiterate once again, a node is an authorized, authoritative verifier of every single transaction and block. It's a fully validating node is what I have here and it validates all the transactions on the blockchain network. Mining is different. Mining, you have to install specialized software and hardware and the goal is to take the already verified transactions and put it on the block and add it to the blockchain so that you can re reward it with actual Bitcoin. So mining, running a full node, very different thing. So I hope this helps. I hope I have not succeeded in confusing you, but um, this is something that I think you should try out and play around with just so that you can have a cool idea about how this stuff works. So, anything else for me? I think that's about it. So, yeah. Get Andreas's book. He can play, explain this much better than I can. Anyway, so next time, my wish for you is that you learn about blockchain technology because blockchain is changing and will change the world. And those who get involved early, in my personal opinion, will greatly impact the future. And if that's you, then let's go change the world, baby.